The unlimited space and a sparse, widely scattered population are the dominant features of most of the colder regions of the world. Such conditions permit unrestricted maneuver for troops properly trained and equipped for cold weather operations. Small units form the basic working group for cold weather operations. Under normal conditions, they will work together, cook and eat together, and share the same tent or shelter. Small units operating in cold weather must be thoroughly familiar with the special equipment required and the techniques involved in living away from parent organizations for extended periods of time. In order to conduct successful military operations in cold weather and maintain a high level of efficiency and morale, heated shelter must be provided for all troops. An individual's ability to live, work, move, and fight under extreme climatic conditions depends upon adequate shelter. Tents and stoves, therefore, become a vital part of cold weather equipment. The Arctic 10-man tent is a six-sided pyramidal tent supported by a telescopic pole and normally accommodates 10 men and their individual clothing and equipment. If necessary, it can accommodate additional personnel if their equipment is stored outside of the tent. A snow cloth is attached to the bottom of the tent walls. It is used to seal the tent to the ground and to conserve heat in exposed or windswept areas. The tent is ventilated in four locations by built-in ventilators on opposite sides near the apex. Four drying lines are rigged inside the tent on which personnel can hang wet clothing and equipment. The total weight of the Arctic 10-man tent, including the liner, tent pins, and telescopic pole is 76 pounds. Keep in mind that this is dry weight. When the tent is wet or caked with snow and ice, it can weigh considerably more. In addition to the telescopic pole and tent pins, the Arctic 10-man tent comes with a liner that helps provide insulation in extreme cold, as well as prevent the formation of frost on the inside of the tent. The 10-man Arctic tent is placed in an Accio sled, which has a 200-pound carrying capacity with additional equipment such as a bow saw, two D-handle coal shovels, two machetes, one axe, two hammers, a fire extinguisher, space heater arctic with stove board, five gallon fuel can, etc. This equipment is vital once you have located your tent site. With proper training, small troop units will be able to pitch the tent in 15 to 30 minutes. Several factors must be considered when pitching tents in snow or on frozen ground. Leaders must ensure protective gloves are worn by all personnel pitching the tent to prevent contact frostbite when working with metal objects. Whenever possible, snow should be cleared to the ground surface to obtain a lower silhouette and gain advantage of ground temperatures, which generally are warmer than air temperatures. When it is impractical to remove the snow to ground level, an adequate tent site may be made by packing the snow with boots, skis, and snowshoes until a firm base is provided to pitching the tent. If the tent is dug in, allow a minimum of six and a half feet clearance between the walls of the tent and the walls of the snow pit. In the event of a fire, personnel must have room to roll out from under the tent walls in order to escape the flames. Once the tent has been unfolded and positioned where it is to be set up and the wind direction has been determined, the tent can be easily rotated to its correct position, with the door 45 degrees from downwind by using the eave lines. Always grasp the tent, never grasp the tent lines to move the tent. The tent lines get brittle in cold weather and could break. Ensure that both entrances to the tent and liners are zippered shut. If the tent is erected while the doors are open, you may not be able to zip the doors shut once all the tent lines are tightened. The corner eave lines are then staked approximately six feet from the corners of the tent. There are six corner eave lines located on opposite sides of the tent where the roof meets the walls and the walls form corners. Ensure that the corner eave lines are in line with the corresponding seam of the tent and that the eave line on one side of the tent forms a straight line through the apex of the tent to the opposite corner eave line. When driving tent pins into the ground, ensure the tent pins lean slightly away from the tent. This will prevent the lines from slipping off the pins or pulling the pins out of the ground. Avoid driving metal pins into rough or rocky ground when excessive force is required. You should never drive pins into the ground with the tent line attached. Alternative anchors are shown in the cold weather manual FM 31-70. Leave the tent line slack for erecting the tent. The telescopic pole is extended to between six and eight feet. One soldier crawls under the tent with a telescopic pole. The pole spindle is placed into the support ring inside the apex of the tent. 
Use some type of platform to place beneath the pole to prevent the pole from sinking into the snow. As this soldier maintains the vertical position of the telescopic pole, the corner eave lines are tightened by pulling opposite lines simultaneously. The six corner lines located between the corner eave lines and the apex of the tent are then attached to the tent pins securing the corner eave lines. The corner lines can also be secured to additional pins placed one and a half foot further from the tent. Anchor and tighten the eave lines located between the corner eave lines approximately six feet from the tent. The door eave line can be propped up by placing a clove hitch in the eave line and over an improvised pole approximately six feet tall at a distance of at least three feet in front of the door. Then strike the door eave line out to a tent pin positioned approximately six feet from the tent. This keeps the doors at a height of four to five feet and makes the zipper work better, making the tent easier to get into and out of and gives the tent greater stability. Ensure the tent cloth along the bottom of the tent wall is spread on the ground outside the tent. The Space Heater Arctic, also called the SHA, is used to heat the Arctic 10-man tent. When disassembled for transport, all the components of the SHA, with the exception of the stove board, will fit inside the stove body, reducing the space required to pack the stove in the Accio. The SHA can burn both liquid and solid fuels, although operation with solid fuels requires some minor modification. Approved liquid fuels for use with the SHA are JPs 5 through 8, DFA, DF1, DF2, kerosene, and Jet A. Approved solid fuels are wood and coal. Gasoline, JP4, used motor oil, solvents, or other unauthorized fuels should never be used. Using unauthorized fuels will create a fire danger and potential for explosion. One five gallon can of approved liquid fuel will burn for approximately 15 hours at maximum firing rate. A piece of plywood slightly larger than the base of the stove and sheathed in tin or aluminum should always be carried as part of the tent group equipment. This stove board provides a firm base for the stove to stand on as well as reducing the fire hazard when the stove is operated in a tent where the floor is covered with grass, leaves, or other potentially combustible material. Before setting up the stove, inspect the tent to ensure that no conditions exist that would make operation of the stove unsafe. Ensure that the stove pipe opening in the tent roof is serviceable with no cracks or tears in the neoprene. Next, ensure that the stove pipe opening flaps are rolled and securely tied, and that each flap can be tied at both the top and the bottom. One of the leading causes of tent fires are loose stove pipe opening flaps coming into contact with hot stove pipes. Ensure all fuel spillage control measures are in place before using this stove. Before the SHA can be used, all components must be removed from their respective storage areas. Protective gloves must be worn by all personnel to prevent contact frostbite when working with metal objects. Petroleum resistant gloves must be worn at all times when you are handling fuel. To install the burner cover assembly for solid fuel operation, slide the front door latch to the left and open the front door. If the burner cover assembly is currently installed in the door frame, remove it and allow it to hang from its retaining chain. If the solid fuel grate is installed, remove the grate and install the burner cover assembly smooth side down over the burner assembly opening. Slide the cover back toward the rear of the heater until its back edge engages in the burner cover retaining clip. Install the solid fuel grate in position over the installed burner cover assembly, making sure to install the grate with its feet down on the deck of the upper heater area. If the heater will be operated in liquid fuel mode, the burner door assembly must be installed in the door frame located behind the front door. This is to prevent any air from entering through the front door of the heater. To verify proper installation of the burner cover assembly, slide the front door latch to the left, open the front door, and ensure that the solid fuel grate is not installed. The burner cover assembly must be installed in the door frame blocking the area behind the front door. When the burner cover assembly is installed, close and latch the front door. For safe operation, be sure to allow at least two feet of space between the heater and the shelter wall. Never relight a heater when it is still hot. Be sure to allow the heater to cool completely before attempting to relight, and do not attempt to replenish the fuel supply while the heater is in operation. Assemble the stack section and ensure that the seams are lined up. 
Place the largest diameter stack section into the heater. Place the heater on the stove board directly under the stove pipe opening. Separate the stack assembly and assemble the stack sections in order of decreasing size onto the crimped end of each adjoining stack section. Each stack section is stamped on the side with a number. The largest diameter stack section is stamped one and installs in the heater body. Lift the assembled exhaust stack and pass it through the stovepipe opening. Inside the shelter, raise the stack assembly and position the bottom stack into the largest stovepipe stamp one. Ensure that the stack assembly is positioned straight. Tie the stack cap guy lines to the closest corresponding tent line where the tent line attaches to the tent eave. Do not connect the guy lines to fixed objects such as trees or additional tent pins. If the tent is moved by the wind or as a result of personnel bumping against it, the stove and pipes must be free to move with it. If they are not, the stove could collapse resulting in a tent fire. Slide the fuel flow control valve from front to back fully into the sleeve on the right side of the heater. Be certain that the control valve is fully seated in the sleeve, does not bind on the sleeve, and is level with the heater when installed. Reach into the cutout area on the right side of the SHA. Pull out the fuel control outflow hose and connect it to the fuel outlet fitting on the base of the fuel control valve. Connect the overflow hose quick disconnect fitting to the fuel discharge fitting. Connect the fuel supply hose to the fuel inlet fitting. The open end of the overflow hose is placed on a hazmat pad to catch any fuel that may spill. Route the overflow hose and fuel supply hose outside the tent to the fuel supply location. Ensure the fuel line is routed away from the stove body to prevent it from coming in contact with it. After ensuring the fuel on-off control on the fuel flow control valve is set to the off position, remove the cap from the mouth of the fuel can and replace it with the gravity feed adapter. Thread the adapter onto the fuel can securely to prevent fuel leakage. Attach the mail end of the fuel supply hose to the gravity feed adapter fitting and set the assembled fuel can aside. Construct a fuel can tripod with three poles approximately six and a half feet long. Tie these together about two thirds of the length from the bottom with nylon cord, rope, or wire. Erect the tripod between the tent lines nearest the stove so the fuel can is two to three feet above the fuel flow control valve. Invert the fuel can and mount it on the tripod so that the gravity feed adapter faces the ground. Use a sling rope from the Accio group to secure the fuel can to the tripod. The sling rope secures the fuel can to the tripod during windy conditions. Place a drip interceptor loop in the fuel supply hose approximately one foot away from the fuel can. This is accomplished by creating a loop in the fuel supply hose and securing it with rope, wire, or 550 cord. The purpose of this loop is to prevent fuel dripping from the fuel can from traveling down the fuel supply hose and saturating the tent with fuel, thus creating a major fire hazard. Ensure a hazmat pad is placed beneath the drip interceptor loop. You may utilize the same hazmat pad used for the overflow hose. When lighting or refueling the stove, all personnel in the tent must be awake and prepared for emergency exit. A fire guard must be standing by with a fire extinguisher at the ready. Lift the fuel selector control knob on the fuel flow control valve and set it in accordance with the outside temperature. There are two positions, above minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit and below minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Set the fuel on off control to on, set the flow adjustment knob to high and wait two to five minutes in order to allow the fuel flow control valve and the burner up tube to fill with fuel. Remember, this step should only be performed under conditions below minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Under warmer conditions, it will not be necessary to wait two to five minutes. Shake or tap the hoses to clear any bubbles that may be trapped in the hoses. Open the door assembly and verify that the burner cover assembly has been installed in the door frame. Shut and latch the door. Open the heater lid and ensure that the down tube is securely fitted over the up tube inside the burner. Holding the priming cup under the priming valve on the fuel supply hose, open the valve slowly and fill the cup with fuel. Shut the valve when the cup is full. Pour the fuel onto the bottom of the burner, making sure no fuel is spilled on the superheater ring, which can cause fuel to leak inside the base of the stove body, resulting in a fire. If the outside temperature is below minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit, 
Pour an additional cup of fuel into the bottom of the burner. Take a short length of tissue or paper, rolled into a ball, and soak up any excess fuel that may remain in the cup. Light the fuel-soaked tissue and toss it into the bottom of the burner. Use the reaming tool if necessary to make sure that the burning tissue reaches the bottom of the burner where it can ignite the priming fuel. Make sure that the burning tissue remains down in the burner. Close the lid assembly. After waiting approximately five to 10 minutes for the heater to warm up sufficiently and begin to give off heat, gradually adjust the flow adjustment knob to the desired heat output. In extremely cold conditions, if the firing rate on high setting is not generating sufficient heat output, tap the control valve and shake the hoses to eliminate any air that may be trapped. If output is still insufficient, turn the heater control valve to low for five to 10 minutes, which will heat the bottom of the burner then turn the control valve back to the high position. When the stove is in operation, a fully dressed alert fire guard must be monitoring the stove at all times. This fire guard must be licensed on the stove. In order to refuel the stove, set the fuel on off control to off to shut down the heater. Do not attempt to refuel a hot heater. Allow the SHA to cool completely before handling or refueling. Remove the fuel can from the tripod and replace it with a full fuel can. Relight the heater. To shut down the SHA from operation, set the fuel on off control to off and remove the fuel can from the tripod. Allow the heater to cool to the touch. Critical points to remember. The tent apex must be between six to eight feet. The top of the tent doors are approximately four to five feet high and the door poles are approximately three feet from the tent. The snow cloth is placed on the outside of the tent. The stove board is level. The stove door faces the main entrance of the tent. The fuel can is inverted and secured to the tripod prior to lighting the stove. The stove pipes are connected in sequence with the seams aligned. The stack cap assembly guy lines are secured to the tent from three separate opposing directions. The stove pipe opening in the tent must be serviceable. After the stove has been shut off and has cooled completely, Ensure that the fuel flow control valve is in the off position. Remove the fuel can from the tripod and remove the gravity feed adapter from the fuel can. Remove all the fuel lines and purge them of fuel either back into the fuel can or onto a hazmat pad. The fuel supply hose can be connected back to itself to prevent excess fuel from leaking out. Remove the fuel flow control valve from the heater and purge it of any fuel onto a hazmat pad. Before storing the fuel flow control valve, set the on-off control to the on position. This will prevent the valve from becoming clogged during storage. Remove and nest the stove pipes in sequence, taking care to offset the seams. Place the component parts inside the stove so that the door and stove body openings close and lock. Return the stove to the Akio for transport. Prior to striking the Arctic 10-man tent, ensure all equipment has been removed from inside of the tent. Remove the center pole and base plate, adjusting the center pole to its shortest length. Adjust all the tent lines to full length. The corner lines and eave lines are rolled and secured as close to the tent as possible. Remove and secure the tent pins and door poles in the Akio. Folding the Arctic 10-man tent is a relatively simple task. After the tent has been struck, close all zippers and try to remove as much snow and ice as possible from the tent. Try to avoid stepping on the tent. One man grasps the tent apex while the others pull the tent, folding it in half. Straighten the tent, trying to remove as many of the wrinkles as possible. Straighten the liner at the same time. Grasp the tent at the connection point of the corner eave line that is located to the rear of the stovepipe shield and pull out the corner of the panel. Continue to pull the panels until all of the panels are stacked. The corner eave lines are then daisy chained together and neatly stored in the folded tent. Fold the tent over once on its long axis. Then fold the tent from the base about one third of the way towards the apex. Then fold the apex over towards the base, overlapping the previous fold. Return the tent to the Akio for transport. Here are a number of safety precautions to follow when operating the Space Heater Arctic to heat the Arctic 10-man tent. All stovepipe connections must be secured tightly. The stove must be level so that the flame is spread equally inside the stove. The fuel hose must be protected so it cannot be pulled loose accidentally. The fuel line must not be allowed to touch the hot stove. 
The rate of fuel flow must be checked at regular intervals because it will change as the fuel supply drops and will require some adjustment. A lit stove must never be left unattended. Maintaining a hotter fire than necessary may cause the stove body to become overheated and warped. While the fuel can is being changed, the fuel regulator must be in the off position. Ensure the stove is cool to the touch before relighting. All fuel supplies must be kept outside the tent. Fuels used in combat areas in the north are normally low temperature fuels which will flow freely in the cold. Training will be recorded on the soldier's DA-348 equipment operator's qualification record or the computer generated DA-348 and OF-346 government motor vehicle operator's identification card per AR-600-55. Only those personnel meeting this requirement will operate or be a fire guard for the SHA or any approved space eater. All individuals will be trained on how to properly use the type of fire extinguisher currently used in their organization. The Arctic 10-man tent and Space Heater Arctic are well-designed pieces of equipment that with proper training and sufficient caution will serve the user well. Strict observation of the preceding safety precautions and attention to the capabilities and limitations of the equipment will go far to ensure a safe experience.